Wellington anniversary day, so a quiet one in the capital today, except for the Black Caps lower order, the Basin Reserve. What a comeback that was. But once again, Auckland's property market is in the news. The issue, again, affordability. With the Demographia survey finding median sales prices in Auckland were 9.7 times greater than median household incomes. That measure puts Auckland fourth equal with Melbourne and San Jose as the least affordable property markets in the 367 cities surveyed. Whilst this me measure is always seen as an insight into property prices, what's interesting is that San Jose is a much more expensive property market. What puts Auckland on an unaffordability level pegging with them is a much lower median income here. San Francisco is another example, more expensive than Auckland, but slightly more affordable too, owing to higher median incomes. There's so much to discuss. But in other words, Auckland is now a city where people with jobs simply can't afford to buy. We say to people, get a job, they've got one, they still can't get onto the property ladder. I went out this morning and spoke to people in Glen Innes and in Royal Oak and Epsom, all have work, none own their own homes. Do you own a home? No, no I don't. Can you afford a house in Auckland? No, not at all. Not at all. So you've got a tertiary qualification, you're a trained teacher, you've got a job as a teacher and you can't afford to buy a home in Auckland? That's right, yeah, yeah, it's too expensive. And you've got a job, you're working hard, so you're a career driver? Yeah, I, I work six days a week. Preston, what do you do? I work at the airport. Good job? Yeah, very excellent job, love my job. Do you have a job? Yeah, I'm a cleaner. How much do you spend in rent each week? Uh, four fifty. Oh, at the moment four ninety. It's a hell of a lot of money. That isn't is it? a lot of money. <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah. So that's the best part of twenty five grand a year mm. of after tax income. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so you're expecting to rent for your whole life. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever own a home in Auckland? Not in Auckland. Maybe back home where I'm from, but not up here in Auckland. Where are you from? I'm from Colwood. So what are you going to do? I'm going to move out of, out of Auckland. <laughs> We're looking at Waiuku or Tauranga. And can you afford Waiuku or Tauranga? Yes. Yeah, I can. So you can't afford to buy a house in this town? Oh, no. No way. We're actually looking to looking to go down, like the rest of Auckland is, down to the, down to the bay to buy once our kids finish their varsity, yeah. So you can afford a home in Kawado, yep. but you can't get the work in Kawado. No, that's exactly it, yeah. And you can get the work in Auckland, but you can't afford the home in Auckland. Yep, yep that's definitely right there. Yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, 19 and 12. And how often do you get to take them to the movies or have a really lovely treat, just do something a bit special? Oh, not often, not often at all. Do you worry? Look at your glorious daughter beside <laughs> you. Do you, <laughs> do you worry that there's a generation of children now who are going to find home ownership in the city almost impossible? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. What do you think needs to be done, Preston, to help get people into homes in Auckland? People like you who are doing everything right, You've moved to get work, you've got work. What needs to happen? I guess some sort of assistance, like a rent to own kind of assistance, or even an incentive. Like, nothing should be handed out for free these days. Um, commitment must be shown. I live at home with my mum, so. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm 30. So you're living at home with your mum? Yep. Been there, been back home for just over a year now. Are you trying to save a deposit, or what are you doing? No, I'm trying to help my mum. And pay the mortgage. Gosh, it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, really tough. 11 minutes past five. I spoke to younger people today and also late last year in a podcast for Radio New Zealand called Payday is Broke Day who don't believe they will ever own a home in Auckland, no matter what they do. People talk a lot about winning a lotto as an in. Interestingly, the first division prize on Saturday night was a three-way split of $333,000 each. That's considerably less than half. Auckland's median price. Shamabil Yaakob is an economist who wrote the book Generation Rent with his wife Selena. He's here in the studio with me now. Thanks for coming in Shamabil. It's nice to have you here. How disastrous is this? Well, I mean, we've created this massive wedge between generations and you know, while for my parents and their parents it was absolutely possible to get into housing and have that Kiwi dream, it's simply not possible for most people living in cities like Auckland today. Okay, and these people, the people, are, and this is just glib and cliched, but let's use the glib and the cliche. These people are doing what we ask of them, right? They have jobs. 
So when I, I'm 51, when I was growing up, if you had a job, there was a certain inevitability about the fact that sooner or later you would own a home. These people don't feel that's the case anymore. Yeah, and I think the, the big thing was that you could see that it would eventually happen for most people. And you had some control over your destiny and you could achieve what was culturally given a big waiting to. But it's just not possible anymore. It's, it's not enough to be educated. It's not enough to have a job. You must have a rich parent. You must have, a, have somebody who's going to give you a hand. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. It's not enough to have two jobs. I mean, lots of the people I spoke to, you know, mm. both, both people in the couple are working. So, Shamabil... The solution, we tend to be looking at the supply side, don't we? Certainly the government is looking at the supply side, the council is looking at the supply side. How does the supply side work given that it takes a long time to build properties, homes? It works very slowly and that's why any policies that we have to put in place have to be done um, deliberately and over a long period of time and we have to take the politics out of it because otherwise what will happen is when there's a change in government or a change in council, we rewind and unwind a lot of the good things that might happen. The reality is that we need to do a lot of things. And you know, when we we're writing the book, it was hard to kind of prioritize all the different solutions. Generation rent. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of, lot of it was around how do we control demand? It's about raising interest rates, limiting access to int uh, mortgages, that kind of stuff. But in reality, that's not the big problem. The problem is we're not building enough homes close to places where people can get to work, you know, have fun, transport. That's really what matters. And this is where local government does have a big role to play. This is not about picking on them but they hold the ultimate tool in terms of providing the solution. Okay, let's set aside local government at the moment because central government, if we go to a place like Pocono, and for people who don't know Auckland, this is at the top of the Bombay Hills just as you go down the other side. So people say there's no, you know, Aucklanders think there's no life beyond the Bombay Hills. Actually, Auckland's now beyond the Bombay Hills, right? Absolutely. But that requires substantial infrastructure. It requires schools, it requires roads, it requires shops, it requires... All. That's central government, right? So we need... An, mm -hmm. And if central government aren't prepared to make that commitment, then the solution becomes a council response much nearer the centre of the city. Is that what you're saying? I think it does. And I mean, the thing with places like Pocono, not that there is anything wrong with Pocono, but... You know, people are spending lots of time on roads, so there is congestion and we kind of create the problems in other ways, but also the social problems. You know, how do you get to, to spend enough time at home with your kids or your family? All of if, those if kinds of things. If you're sitting on the southern motorway for two hours a day. Exactly. At least, right? Yeah. But the I think the problem is because everything is in bits, right? So education is looking after schools, health is looking after GPs, transport is looking after infrastructure. Um, and local councils looking after the uh, local planning policies. Everybody's got different um, roles to play and nobody's looking at it as a whole. And that's where leadership is required and that's where central government is absolutely critical to get it right. But the fundamental solution has to be around much more density in close to the cities and getting much more density around transport corridors. That is the only way it'll work. Okay. If we look at where we're sitting now, right, for people who don't know where Radio New Zealand is in Central Auckland, it's on Hobson Street. Mm. And this is a high density housing area, but yep. those houses around us, those apartment buildings around us are so ugly and so cheap looking and so lacking in any kind of architectural merit. Is that the template really? Well, I don't think so. I think we can do it a lot better. And I think there'll be some people who'll tell you that planning rules and planning regulations um, are getting in the way of everything. But the reality is that there is cost of getting design principles wrong, density wrong, because there are costs of density. You know, things can be ugly. You can have too many people, not enough public spaces, all of that kind of stuff. And that's why planning regulation has to remain to make sure that we do it right. But we also know that we have to do it right in the sense that we have to produce enough housing. I was talking to a bunch of young kids in the weekend. They were having a political gathering. And they asked me, you know, what do I see Auckland as, as an ideal where housing is affordable? I said, one more story right across Auckland. That would do it. Right. So people who are sitting in their villas and wherever at the moment are kind of going dry in the mouth and listening to you and thinking, no, we don't want that. Well, and I think a lot of people are thinking density looks like high-rise apartments next to them. That's not what we're talking about at all. Auckland doesn't have that kind of projected demand in population and housing need. What we need are, you know, variety in terms of types of houses and where those houses are. So, for example, it's really hard to build one and two bedroom places around Auckland mm. these days. Mm. And yet, you know, that's where most of the growth is because people are getting older, families are getting smaller and starting later. And we're building mainly four and five bedroom houses. But most of the growth in families is in one and two. 
so as close to the centre of the city as possible, or near good transport. transport. And that transport one is a real critical one because not everybody wants to see it, live in the CBD. And we have to create opportunities for people to live the lifestyle that they want, with the amenities that they want. You might be want to be close to the parks, you might want to be close to the Waitakere Ranges, you know, which is amazing. But if we don't do it with the transport, what we do is we just throw even more problems into a motorway network, which is just struggling, mm -hmm. just struggling. Shamavil Yakov, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Pleasure. Shamavil's book is Generation Rent. 17 minutes past five is the time on Checkpoint. We asked the Minister of Youth Affairs and Auckland Central MP Nikki Kay to come on Checkpoint to talk about housing affordability in this city and what she says to young people who increasingly believe that they will never own a property here. Uh, her office declined. We didn't ask Housing Minister Nick Smith on the programme, but his office sent us a statement, RNZ a statement anyway, in it the Minister says this year's demographia survey shows the New Zealand housing affordability has improved since 2008 and that the ratio of average house price to income is now 5.2 down from 6.3. That's New Zealand wide obviously. And Dr Smith says once interest rates were included currently at historic lows, home ownership is, quote, significantly more affordable now than when National came to office.